Hello friends. Many people take it for granted that anarchism could theoretically abolish the state if only it had enough momentum with the masses. The state cannot be abolished. Not can't in the sense that it shouldn't be, but in the sense that the abolition of the state is impossible. First, what is anarchism? Anarchism is the belief in the abolition of all hierarchies, or in modern times, all unjust hierarchies. Second, what is the state? To answer that question, we will analyze history. Today there exists a state, but was there ever a time in which the state did not exist? Yes. So what changed? In short, the development of class. More importantly, the development of class struggle. Classes struggle. Some classes triumph. Others are eliminated. Such is the history of mankind for thousands of years. In the triumph of some classes over others, the ruling classes, in order to cement their class rule, must set up institutions of power which they use to subdue and subvert class interests of the lower classes. This is a state. The state is the primary manifestation of class struggle. Class struggle is intrinsically tied to class. Where there is class, there is class struggle. All classes have their own values and interests, which are inherent to them. The slave master wishes to own as many slaves as possible. The slave wishes to be free. The lord wishes to own as much land as possible. The serf wishes to become a lord. The capitalist wishes to make as large a profit as possible. The proletarian wishes to make as high a wage as possible. Class interests, more often than not, contradict one another. This is why states themselves exist. In an effort to preserve the ruling classes of their societies, they set up state power to silence and or illegalize the class interests of the lower classes. If the state is the primary manifestation of class struggle, so long as there are classes, there is a state. So then, a good analysis of whether the state exists or not is whether or not there are classes. If there are classes, then one must be liberated while the others are oppressed. So then we ask ourselves, were there classes in the anarchist experiments such as the Free Territory and CNT Catalonia? In short, yes, there were, but let me give some more detail as to why that is so. In each of them, there was an emphasis to express the particular interests of the proletariat above all others. Both of them set up prisons where people who were promoting the old way of life, like capitalism, were sentenced. The bourgeoisie themselves did not exist in these experiments, but they did have the capacity to emerge as a class, such was the same in the Soviet Union. And in these experiments, institutions had to be set up to try and prevent the re-emergence of the bourgeoisie. But with these institutions built up, they were oppressing the bourgeoisie and liberating the proletariat. That is, class struggle. In Makhno's Ukraine, the phrase, death to all those who stand in the way of the working people, is literally enshrined on the flag. As communists, obviously, the people are our power, not the bourgeoisie. There were institutions set up to stop the bourgeoisie from regaining power, but that is a state as it's the oppression of one class by another. That is a prime example of the liberation of one class and the oppression of another. The Free Territory was a state, and the CNT-FAI was a state. Classes will inevitably struggle against one another. Either the bourgeois class had to regain full power, or the people had to gain full power. But in order for either of them to do that, they would have to set up institutions of power, which creates a state. The state is the primary manifestation of class struggle. That class struggle gives way to the liberation of one class and the oppression of others. The only way to give rise to one class and stop the rise of another is to build up institutions of class power for that ruling class, and those institutions create a monopoly on legitimate violence. How else would you oppress the rise of a class but to put their speakers and leaders in jail, or to make their class interests illegal? Can you privately own a business in an anarchist territory? If the answer is no, then that is the illegalization of bourgeois class interest, which is class struggle, which gives rise to the proletarian state. If the answer is yes, then that is the subversion of the interests of the proletariat, which is class struggle, which gives rise to a bourgeois state. 
The only way you can get rid of a state is if you have eliminated the need for institutions of class power. If the capacity for capitalism no longer exists, then the bourgeoisie as a class cannot reemerge, and thus it no longer exists. If there is no struggle between classes, then the meaning of class is gone, and the proletariat as a class is dissolved. There is no state ownership over a workplace, there is no bourgeois ownership over a workplace, and there is no worker ownership over a workplace. The concept of ownership over a workplace is entirely withered away.